What's up guys, Hong Nguyen here for OG Fitness and in today's video we're gonna talk about the dangers of judo for older guys. So if you're new to the channel, welcome, consider subscribing. This channel is all about fitness and martial arts for older guys, right? I'm 41 years old, I've been doing judo now for about four or five years and uh, I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for six and a bunch of martial arts uh, of course, uh, as I grew up, you know, when I was younger. The two things that you have to be really careful about when you do judo, when you start judo later in life, okay, is your knees and your shoulders. Those are the two main things. Now, let's start with the knees, right? The reason why the knees go, right, is that, well, there's a lot of entanglement that happens when you do judo. So, for example, uh, you know, you're sweeping people, you're trying to do osotos, you're trying to do uchimadas, any of that stuff. I mean, your, your legs are always entangled. So, I mean, the wrist is so high that you get busted up, you know, during a fall, some kind of uh, false movement maybe. And one thing that happened to me is that when uh, people go for a, a, you know, an attack, okay, my foot sometimes gets stuck to the ground, not because uh, I'm putting because all my weight is on it and sometimes that's due to the the fact that your opponent is actually pulling on your on your gi your sleeve and your collar and he's pulling you down so as he's pulling you down like that you're stuck on the ground and if he goes for an attack right and your knee your foot is stuck into the ground and it twists well you know that's what happens right so the knee goes and now on to the shoulders okay so the, for the shoulders the problem is the falling guys you fall enough times it's really hard on the body, especially on the shoulders. Now, the reason why is because you're always reaching out like that. And as you fall, which is, by the way, you shouldn't be reaching out like that, but even if you fall and you break fall properly, that's fine, right? Even if you break fall, sometimes you don't have time and you just land on the shoulder. Or you might be in this configuration where your arm is bent like this and you fall down like that, which you shouldn't, but it does happen, right? Sometimes you, you didn't fall 100% so to speak right so it wasn't epon it was just that you fell kind of like um, half halfway towards the ground and then boom you got to get back up and that's what happens so it adds up it adds up right and also another thing is that well when you're doing judo you're you're here all right you're constantly trying to grab the guy grab the guy pull the guy like that so what happens is that this arm is already constantly being pulled on okay so it's going to do something to your shoulder definitely and then people attack this is my right arm, guys, and people attack this arm all the time. Most people are righty, uh, okay? And so that's the thing, constantly being attacked on this arm. So they're pulling on this arm, they're jacking it up from the bottom up, you know, when they do epon or just grabbing it, pulling it down, and so on. All of that adds up, and that's how you end up with messed up shoulders. We're gonna talk about the solutions now, okay? For your knees, there's only one way to go about it. You gotta get bigger muscles and stronger muscles. The bigger your muscles are, the more potential you actually have for strength. So you actually want your legs to be, oh, I'm not saying. Actually, the bigger the better. <laughs> if you're an older guy, the bigger the better. Because it's not like if you could pack on muscle that easily. You know, that's, that's a fallacy. Um, you know, when people get, when people tell you shit like, um, oh, you know, uh, pa I packed on, Easily, I can pack on 10 pounds of muscle a month. Well, it's not really muscle, dude. It's like mostly fat, glycogen, water, a little bit of muscle if, well, there's always a little bit of muscle, but mostly fat, water, and glycogen. Anyways, I digress. Uh, so let's get back to it. So now, the only way is to get really, to get your muscles bigger, okay? Everything at the bottom. So that means your glutes, your quads, your hamstrings, and your calves too. You have to get those up there, bigger, stronger, okay? And that's the only way because, okay, the glutes too, that's the thing that people neglect, right? The thing with the glutes is that, well, it helps to stabilize the knee. I mean, it's all attached, right? So your knees, your quads, your hams, your calves, right? Have to be tip-top shapes, big and strong, okay? And then, of course, you're gonna have injuries. You're gonna accumulate injuries throughout uh, by doing judo. There's no such thing as risk-free unless you really don't do any uh, sparring and you're, you only do katas and even then you're very careful and picky about who you're, uh, you know, who you're doing it with, which kind of takes, in my opinion, takes away the fun of judo, like of martial arts, because I like to spar, right? And without sparring, I would, I would fall asleep. Honestly, it would be like, it would make no sense for me. If you're my age, you're probably already injured. 
you probably have knee issues already, shoulder issues. So the thing is, uh, you know, ligaments, they don't heal. And if your ligaments are damaged, partially torn, like mine's are, the only way to go about it is to have really huge muscles to compensate so it could stabilize the knee because you don't have those ligaments. Your ligaments are either completely torn off or they're weak. So for the shoulders, you got to get your shoulders really strong too. Now, here's the thing with the shoulders is that the front is always strong. It's always overdeveloped, okay? You need to get your shoulders strong and bigger on the side and in the back. So the side delt and the rear delt. That's what you have to focus on when you, when you um, uh, how do you say it? When you, when you want to work your shoulders. Anything pushing, you're already doing a lot of exercise for the front. You don't need to do extra work for the shoulders for the front. You need to hit the sides more. The sides and the back, the rear here, okay? That's how it goes. And of course, here's the other thing. Um, you gotta work all the, uh, the back muscles, right? <clears throat> Upper back to be able to pull this back, okay? And you gotta work on your mobility. Oh, that's the thing too, guys. You have to work on the mobility of your hips too. So when, let's just backtrack a bit, go back to the legs, okay? All the muscles in the legs, right? Plus you have to be mobile, okay? In terms of your hips. So you have to work on your mobility. Because if you lack in mobility, your body's gonna compensate. And by compensating, well, you're gonna have like even more muscular imbalances than you should. And that's gonna, you know, probably lead to some kind of form of injury or, a, you know, dysfunctionality in your movement pattern and blah, blah, blah. And that's just like a cascading effect to you getting messed up. <laughs> okay, so the shoulders. Lateral shoulders, rear shoulders, right? <laughs> all the muscles in the upper back and mobility. That's it. So you got to mobilize your shoulders a lot, a lot because my shoulders, well, first of all, there's tears, the rotator cuff, all kinds of stuff, right? And of course there's calcification, uh, you know, wear and tear in the joint itself. I mean, I go like this, you could literally hear it. Yeah, that's how bad it is. So if you want to do judo later in life, you got to be aware that these two areas, not if, <laughs> when. And of course, to better your chances of not getting injured or limiting the damage, that's what you have to do. So we talked about the solution. So essentially get bigger and stronger and mobility exercises for your knees and your shoulders, okay? So that's what you have to do to minimize, uh, you know, the risk and the impact of uh, injury, right? When you do get injured and after you get injured, because you will. It's just the nature of the beast, right? Like uh, if you fight, you're gonna get hit. That's the thing, guys. You wanna fight, but you don't wanna get hit. Sorry, man. That's, you know, uh, that's something that a lot of people do uh, in traditional martial arts where there's no sparring. Don't believe you can fight if you actually don't have any real sparring in your practice. If you don't spar enough or you spar once a month, well, that's really not enough to, to see any big improvements. There's no such thing as high level judo or high level anything for that matter, without injuries, right? You're gonna have to live with it. Uh, and it's something that you have to accept because if you don't, then that's what it is, man. Like, um, then don't do it, do something else. It's okay, not everyone's a warrior. I mean, sorry. A huge shout out to my boy, Christian Pham. Uh, he's my video editor and without him, well, these videos would be pretty much shit. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you guys like the new setup. I'm working on it. It's still a work in progress and um, up in production value because I want to grow this, this channel with you guys. Like the video, comment down below, subscribe. What do you think? What are you guys dealing with? And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. And share the video, it helps me to grow and all that. All right, peace.